As we speak, SAB Miller no longer exists. It is also no longer one of the major shares that make up the JSE Top 40. This past week, more than 95% of SAB Miller shareholders signed off on a $104 billion mega brew deal, and it is now under the control of Abinbev, which itself has a market cap of 2.9 trillion rands. There might be a few shareholders out there who are smiling all the way to the bank, but they have to wait anyway, I'll tell you why in a moment, and others who are now participants in this mega brewery. But what are the implications of this deal on the South African economy, the JSE, and the brands of the SAB Miller Company? The shareholders are going to receive their cash from the 11th of October to the 13th of October. That's why. As much as they may be waiting for that, but, you know, there's still a few days to go. The founder of Herenia Capital is Petri Riedeling Hayes, and he joins us to discuss this deal. Petri! Thank pleasure, you. Pleasure to uh, talk to you and uh, catch up with you in person <laughs> here in the, in the studio. SAB has got its own history. It's been mm. there for more than what? Since, uh, what was it? 19, uh, 18, 97. 18, 1897. So it's 119 years old, yeah. Yeah. So no longer South African. No, well, isn't it? Okay, so well, maybe, maybe know, a little I mean, bit of South African pride coming in. You when know? people think of <laughs> it as a very major, important player in the economy. Correct. And uh, as South Africa, it's almost like uh, Springboks and Bafana Bafana. <laughs> it will, but and look, the Proteas. Yeah. And then you throw in the couple of SAB uh, products. They yeah. go together, you see. Yeah. So to many people, it, it, it may feel emotionally exactly. at least. So, it's, so you know, the, the brands will live on. You know, We're not going to suddenly stop getting uh, you know, Castle or... Mm. Black Label or any of the South African brands. I mean, they will continue to thrive uh, and continue to be produced under their same brands. Um, I would think that we as a South African people and maybe a sub-Saharan African people are very loyal to the way that we do things. You mm. know, we might have our squabbles amongst each other uh, from time to time, but for the most part, we like things the way that they are mm. and you're not mm. going to take, uh, you know, someone's Black Label away from him and try and price, replace it with a... With a different brand that he's never seen before that's from Europe somewhere so yes. and then you know, I don't think that we can say that SAB's legacy is going to die I mean the company itself will be controlled uh, by by larger forces I suppose but even so there's a there's a consolidation of effort um, and uh, you know a lot of one of the one of the sort of requirements that the deal needed to do it or needed to adhere to in order to, to go through was that we need to protect jobs so it's not like you know Big Brother is going to step in and kick everyone off the playground and take over and do things mm. their way. Mm. We're going to continue to do things the way that they were done within South Africa. Yes, that's shedding a lot of brands, um, mostly in the offshore market. But, um, you know, things will sort of continue on the way they were. It's just unfortunately now the revenue no longer belongs to South Africa. Yeah. Now, because SAB Miller was a standalone share mm. on the JSE and one of the major ones, for that matter, in the uh, top 40 index Correct. of the JSE. And the fact that it's now no longer existing as a separate share mm -hmm. and part of a, an international company has got implications for the top 40 share, doesn't it? It does indeed. So a number of things happen. One, um, SAB from tomorrow no longer trades on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It is suspended. So it comes out of all the indexes. So you've got the top 40 index, the all share index, the mid cap index, the large cap index. All these indexes, everything is being affected by SAB's now absence. So I mean, it's almost 9% of the top 40 index. Mm. That's a mm. big hole to mm. fill. So now you see other stocks coming in, Impala Platinum, for example, rising to the challenge. It now gets a 0.75% allocation in the index, which still leaves a pretty big gap, mm. which means that all the other companies um, need to have their weightings in the index increased a yes, little bit, yes. which is, I think, why we've seen so much buying power over the last two days. Mm. With the confirmation SABs coming out, the likes of Naspers um, needs to now go up and fill that gap. And Naspers rallies, uh, you know, for the, for the heavens because fund managers and investors are now forced to buy it in order to ensure that their Balance, portfolios are, but, are balanced correctly. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, for individual investors, there is uh, some implication and, and something we, we need to pay attention to, I suppose, right, if you invest directly. Thinking of the people who own Satrix shares, for instance, right. what does this mean for them? So <clears throat> Satrix is an in its, or, or, or any ETF, exchange traded funds, of which Satrix is, is one of many, uh, that is invested in the index. So what that 
investment essentially does is it buys the sh underlying shares in the same allocation as it is in the particular index that it's tracking. Yeah. So with SAB disappearing, um, Satrix will have a number of options. They could then either sell all their shares or they could sell them out in the auction price uh, today or they could take the cash um, and then payment and it. then allocate it okay. later. So then they could rebalance their portfolio later. Okay, so there's no serious no, issue No, look, there. I mean, there might be some tracking error. Tracking error is when there is uh, a slight difference between what the index does and what the investment that's supposed to mirror it does. Mm. So that little errors that come in into that into the, the investment product tracking the index, that's called tracking error. So there might be a little bit of tracking error, but there is some tolerance for it. Uh, within most of the ETF structures, so I don't think it's going to invest, impact you know, the long-term ETF holders or Satrix holders uh, in any negative way. You, you know, what that investment is designed to do is automatically adjust in events just like these. So now, for the shareholders who will be or have opted to cash mm. uh, their investments, um, you know, are there any particular tax implications to think about for them? Well, I can only imagine that you suddenly have a, a whole lot of money hitting your hitting your brokerage account because you know it's probably sitting in a stockbroker account or maybe your thing is set up to pay out your bank account. So you've got all this income. So uh, depending on how long you've held the share for, if you've held the share for uh, two years to the day or more, you will pay capital gains tax. If you've held it for slightly, uh, you know, shorter period than that, than two years, you will pay in nominal income tax at your uh, nominal income tax rate. Now, for people who are maybe very loyal to brands and invest on the basis of a personal relationship they have with <laughs> brands, are there any breweries that are on the stock exchange now? You know, people may have bought SAB simply because they look all around themselves and they, and they see, see SAB wherever they go. Wherever they go. And <laughs> they say, well, you know, at an emotional level, they want to support a specific brewery. And they want a South African and one. And they want the one they can see. Which one is that? Well, there is another company called Distel. Yeah. So uh, one of the conditions for the SAB, ABN, BEV merger to take place was, of course, for SAB to shed many brands. Um, in order to prevent dominance, you yeah. know, no one can compete because yes. I mean you're fighting against a giant kind of thing. So one of the things that they have to get rid of within South Africa, and they've got about three months to do this, yes. is a 26.4 or call it 27% stake in a company called Distel. Yeah. So now Distel was started by uh, the the Rupert family or the Remgro brand, yeah. the Remgro yeah. group, uh, some time ago to try and compete against SAB, but realized that they couldn't, so they sort of abandoned it and set it free. Nonetheless, uh, Remgro still has a relatively large stake in Distel. So they've also purchased an option for the right of refusal to this 27% stake yes. that SAB has. Yes. So within hours of the, the announcement coming that SAB is, the deal is going through, Remgro comes out and says, we have an option on that 27%. We're going to try and raise 10 million rand sorry, 10 billion rand, 9.9 .9 billion rand, in order to fund the purchase of mm. these shares. Mm. So there's an opportunity, I think, for, uh, for us to invest in, because we have uh, uh, the company called Remgro that now is going to own a uh, significant, at the end of it, it'll be a 54% stake mm. in Distel, which produces brands like, you know, Jägermeister and all mm. those mm. <laughs> <laughs> like firm South African mm. favorites. Um, and also a lot of wine, Cape Vin mm. and so on. So there's a lot of wine brands and a lot of, uh, you know, sort of hard liquor, Bacardi, Martini and Gordon's Gin and all sorts of brands that we know and are very familiar with because they are on our shelves that are being produced locally. Yes, they're international brands, but they are produced under license mm. and manufactured and distributed locally. Mm. So that is a potentially uh, replacement for it or a potential replacement for it. Um, alternatively, uh, oh, so sorry, I was... I digress. So investors could get involved in the rights issue for the Remgro share. So that Remgro share is going to come at a, at a bit of a discount. Uh, the share was trading at about 236 Rand when they made the rights offer announcement and they're going to be placing that stock at 192 Rand 50, I think, or 193 Rand 50, I'm unsure, in mm. that range. Mm. Um, but essentially, you're buying that stock for, for a 10% discount. So that could be an opportunity to get involved in a, a good South African brand. I mean, that brand is, is really growing. It's got a big holding in some medical businesses as well. So uh, I digress. So we can look at Distel. Alternatively, 
uh, you could look at uh, buying into AB InBev. I mean, they brought a secondary listing to South Africa yes, yes. with the sole purpose of providing South African investors an with an to opportunity put. to maintain an investment sure. in a company like this. And that is going to be on... So that is already listed. That's yeah. been going for a while. Currently, it is not in the top 40 index, and yes. it will not be replacing SAB in the top 40 index, um, let me say, immediately. Yeah. The, uh, you know, one of the reasons is because it, is, it has a primary listing in a different country, mm. there aren't enough South African shareholders in order to justify it being in the yes. top 40 index. Sure. So as time goes by and South African investors are now settled with the cash, their £45 a share, uh, in October the 11th, um, they'll probably start filtering into that let, let, and buying that. Let me just rush you and uh, get a brief response from you. Just, mm. just, just, <laughs> so we, just so we appreciate what this means. Mm. The South African shareholders who are selling or even staying, the value of their share is what, 45? 45%. 45, 45 pounds, is it? 45 pounds, yes. 45 pounds. Just for perspective, what was it oh, in the past two years, past 24 years? Well, you see, now with the RAND coming, strengthening up a bit, it's sort of working against their favour. At one yeah. point, uh, a couple of months ago, that £45 would have fetched you a solid 1,000 Rand a share, uh, which is not bad. But now it's not so much. It's around 750 Rand yeah. in that sort of But two years range. ago, where was it? Two years ago, the pound was at around 22, I think, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So £45 would have been a lot more back then. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Uh, you know, there's, there's goods and bads. The yeah. good thing is the South African economy, I think, uh, as well as the rest of emerging markets, is going to do well. Um, I think we're a very negative bunch locally, but from the outside perspective, we're not actually as bad. Uh, and I think that we have a good growth story over the next couple of years, which means good for us, but our currency gets stronger. <laughs> so if you're selling well, SAB shares in pounds, you're losing out. Petri, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. That's the founder of Herenia Capital, Petri Redden and Hayes, and uh, he was here to talk to us about the takeover of SAB Miller. Don't you be distressed. The brands are staying, as Petri told us. <laughs>